Okay, hi, so in this video we're gonna talk about half-life. So that's the half-life of radioactive substances, what that actually means, and how we can work that out and do calculations based on that, given some information in exam style questions. So what actually do we mean by the half-life of a radioactive substance? Well, the half-life, half-life, and sometimes you'll see that written uh, with a symbol, T, with a small subscript half like that. What the half-life actually is, is the amount of time it takes for the total amount of a radioactive substance to go down by a half. So that is the time taken for the amount of a radioactive substance to reduce by 50%. Now let me show you what I mean based on an equation. So let's say you had the carbon-14 isotope Okay, carbon-14. Now, we saw previously that this is a beta emitter. Now, this forms nitrogen-14. And obviously, a beta particle is a high-speed electron. And your, or one of your neutrons from your carbon has turned into a proton plus an electron. The electron is the beta particle, and the proton is why we have seven here with the nitrogen rather than six here with the carbon, because we've got one extra proton. Right, now, how does this relate to half-life? Well, the half-life is the time it takes for half of this to actually happen. So let's say, for example, and I'll just label this in red, at some amount of time, right, or let's say at the start, right, right at the start of our process, we've got 100% carbon-14 and no percent nitrogen-14, right? Now, after the half-life, which is a certain amount of time, half of that carbon-14 has decayed and now we would have 50% carbon and 50% nitrogen okay now after that half-life again if that time taken for that to happen so the half-life occurred again now the carbon doesn't go down to zero it halves again and so then you'd have 25% right and now your nitrogen would obviously be 75% right fast forward another half-life you'd have 12.5%, okay, and 87.5%, and so on and so on and so on, right? So your half-life, after your half-life, your amount of radioactive substance halves and halves and halves over and over and over and over again, rather than a set amount of it decaying in a set period of time, okay? That's what a half-life actually is. And one more thing you need to know is that the half-life is constant, right? So... Half-life, uh, let's write that a bit neater. The half-life of a radioactive substance, substance is constant, right? So that means that the half-life doesn't change. The time taken for something to half uh, is the same, irrespective of how many half-lives has already happened before it, etc., etc. Right, and what you might see is this in the form of a graph. And let me show you what I mean. So if we scroll down, here we have a graph, okay? And this is some isotope. We don't know what the isotope is, and it doesn't matter in this case, okay? And what we have on the y-axis here is counts per second. And that is basically uh, equivalent to radioactivity. Okay, remember I said in the last video that we measure radioactivity based on counts, right? It's also measured in becquerels, but it depends on how quickly this happens uh, as to what units you're going to see. But the counts is basically the amount of radioactivity that's given off. Right, and then this is obviously time. I don't really need to label that, but I've already done it. Okay, sorry about that. Had a update reminder there. We're gonna ignore. So, from this graph, basically, we can work out the half-life. Okay, so if we have a look right at the start, our counts per second is up here at 80. Now, remember I said that the half-life is the time taken for the amount of radioactivity to half. And so if we go down to 40, which is half of 80, right, and we go across and we hit our graph here, 
and then we go down and read off the time taken. Well, that time taken, well, we started here at zero, right there at zero, and it took <clears throat> it took us two days, right? So the half life of this radioactive isotope is two days. Now let me show you that the half life remains constant, and I'll do that in another color. The half of forty, okay. Let's say our half life happens again. Half of forty is twenty, right? And if we go across and hit our curve there, and then we go down and see how long that took. Now here the time is four days, and so from two days to four days, that's another two days, which is exactly the same time, and that is our half life. So every two days, our amount of radioactivity halves. And one more time, why not? Half of 20 is 10. And if we go across to our curve, will it have taken two days again to get down to 10? Well, yes, it will, because from four to six is another two days. So each time it takes two days in order for our amount of radioactivity to half. So we can say that half-life or T half, okay, like that, that's how you see half-life written sometimes, is equal to two days for this particular radioactive substance or isotope. All right, and let's finish up by having a look at one more question. So apologies for the bad handwriting once again. But it says, I have a radioactive substance and it has a half-life of 45 minutes. I start or I have 120 grams of that substance. How much of it is left after three hours? Right, so I'm just going to write here that T half equals 45 minutes. Okay, and mass, or well, the starting mass is equal to 120 grams. All right, so that means that I know that every 45 minutes, the amount that I have is going to half. So first of all, I need to work out how many half-lives do I go through in those three hours. All right. First of all, I'm going to say that three hours, okay, so three hours is equal to how many minutes? Well, it's 60 minutes in an hour, so that's 180 minutes. All right. So all I need to do is 180 divided by the half-life, and that will give me how many half-lives go into 180. Right? So 180 minutes divided by 45 minutes. Well, 180 divided by 45. Uh, if you do that in a calculator or you do it in your head, you're going to get an answer of 4. Right? Because if you times 45 by 4, you're going to get 180. So that is 4 half lives. All right. So what does that actually mean? That means that each one of those half lives, I have to half my amount of substance. So, I've got 120, I need to divide that by 2. Okay, that would be once, right? And then, I divide the answer by 2, because that's the second half-life. Divide the answer by 2 again, that's the third half-life. Divide the answer by 2 again, that's the fourth half-life, right? You could do those one by one, and that would be absolutely fine. I prefer, though, to write it in a simpler way. And rather than divide it by two each time, I'm going to say that's the same as times in by a half, right? And how many times do I times it by a half? Well, I do that four times. Okay, so basically it's 120 times a half to the power of four. Okay, or that's the same as saying 120 times by, well, one, one half to the power of four is one over 16. So really, I'm dividing 120 by 16, or times 120 by 1 16th, if you like. And you do that in your calculator, you'll get 7.5 grams. And so the amount of substance I have left is 7.5 grams, right? If I was to do it the long way, just to show you um, that you don't have to simplify your calculation like that, I do 120 divided by 2 is equal to 60. Okay, that's one half-life. The next one, second half-life, you half it again, it's 30. Then you half it again, okay, that equals 15. That's three half-lives. Now you do one more and you get 7.5 grams, okay? Either one of those is gonna give you the same answer. I just prefer to write it this way just because it's neater, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so that was just a brief overview of half-lives and how we use them in calculations. Obviously more of them 
um, will come up in exams and so we will go through more exam questions uh, later on down the line. But I hope that's helped. If you do still have any questions on it, please feel free to post a comment in the box below or send me an email using the link. But as usual, please like and subscribe because it always does uh, help me out and you'll get notified when new videos become available. But I look forward to seeing you in the next one.